guys, today I'm going over IP tables. This was requested a few weeks ago, so I thought I'd go over it now. It took me a while to do this because IP tables has so much functionality to it. But I decided to get this video and just focus on the, what 99% of people use IP tables for, and that is to block incoming traffic. So I'm going to go over the, how to set up your uh, firewall for if you want to open up a port, open up a source, or open up by a protocol. So just keep watching, and I'll show you guys how to do all these things and how to protect your system. The IP tables stored in slash etc sysconfig IP tables. It's recommended not to edit this file manually, but it still can be done. To check the status of IP tables, you do a check config IP tables. It'll tell you if it's enabled by default once the machine restarts. Now, if we want to go ahead and check the service of IP tables to check the status of the service, we can do service IP table status. That'll show us that it is currently active. The output on different operating systems might appear differently on different distributions of Linux. This is running on Fedora. Now we do service IP tables restart. It will go ahead and restart this service. That's if you edit the file manually, you might want to do this. Uh, you could do IP table stop. This could be used for troubleshooting different services. If you run the status check again, you notice that it now says it's inactive. Now we're going to do IP tables, the command, minus capital L. This will give us a listing of all the rules. Now if you notice, there are three chains by default, chain input, chain forward, and chain output. The input chain controls all incoming traffic. This is what most of the rules will focus around. The output chain controls what users are allowed to connect out to. You can restrict that here. And the forward chain is used for kind of NAT setup. Um, don't worry about that if you are not using any kind of NAT setup in your environment. IP tables minus L input will list you the chain information for only the input in your IP table rules. Now let's initially want to set up your default behavior by doing IP tables minus P input saying drop all inputs if it's not part of the rules. Same thing with forward, drop all forward requests if it's not part of the rules and output accept. That means accept all outgoing traffic. I also add a rule here that says add attach to the input chain. When a new or established state is in created, it go ahead and jump to accept. That means accept all new connections. That's pretty much opening up our firewall to everything. Now, if we want to start creating our own firewall rules, a good place to start is using the IP tables minus F to flush all current rules. It's pretty much cleaning the slate. So now we're going to do the IP tables. And now if we view it, you're going to notice that there are no rules there. Everything is empty, all chains. So now we could start adding our rules. So we could go ahead and type in IP tables, minus A for attach. Input is the chain name. So we want to attach a rule to the input chain. Minus I is the interface port. Low is the local loopback port. And minus J is jump to accept. So this is a pretty much a standard for the um, loopback. It's used for mostly testing. The next one you do is add a state. Add new, not new, but established and related states to the input chain and accept. That's saying if someone on your machine is connecting outward, you're allowed to connect back those already established ports. Now if we want to open up a specific port to everyone in the world, we can go ahead and do a minus A for attach to the input chain, minus P for protocol, TCP, minus, minus D port for the port number 22, and minus J to jump to accept. Now we list it again, we have our port listed for TCP traffic on port 22. It's open to anyone that wants to accept. This is usually the SSH port. Now if we want to go ahead and type in minus P, Right, input drop. We want our default behavior to drop all other traffic that doesn't match our rules. Now we're going to go ahead and add some more rules. We have port 80, 442, and 443. 442, port 442 is a typo. So let's say I want to delete a rule because I typed it in by mistake. We're going to go ahead and see it's line 5 there. It's numbered. When you do an IP tables minus L minus B minus N minus minus line number, it will give you the line number, which is useful when you want to delete an entry. So let's say you won't want to add by a port, but you want to add by a source. A source is an IP that traffic is coming from. So you do a minus S, the IP number, or the subnet plus the subnet mass slash 22, 
in this case, it could be different, and then jump to accept. So it's saying anything from a specific IP address or that specific subnet, which every machine between 0 and 255 on that subnet, can be added right here. For an even more specific rule, you could specify TCP traffic from a specific IP address to a specific port. All these things need to match up for this input to be accepted on your computer. I go ahead and see the traffic rule here. You notice the field, TCP, the source, and then the IP. The last step, which is also the most important step, is to save the rules you just defined. So on many distributions of Linux, service IP table save will work. On some distributions, you're going to have to do use another command. So slash etc init.d slash IP table space save should work on other distributions. I'm on Fedora 17, Beefy Miracle, where I have to do IP tables dot save and output it into my config file, which is located etc sysconfig IP tables. Now I'm going to use the more command to view the file, which shows me the text, and it's exactly the rules as we defined it. Now on restart, the rules will be there. Thanks for watching, guys. If you have any questions or comments, leave them below. Otherwise, I will see you guys next time. And let me know if you want more advanced IP table topics. I could do that as well.